Welcome back to the Academy. Today we're going to talk about shielding gas, why it's important, what gases are there, and we also prepared a little experiment for you. So stay tuned and see what the coffee is for. So the first question a lot of people ask is, why do I need shielding gas in general? So it's pretty simple, so your machine doesn't burn. Whenever you fuse metal powder with a laser, it gets really, really hot. And if you would not use any kind of shielding gas, your metal would start burning. It would just oxidate and basically it would look like New Year's Eve just inside your machine. <laughs> and you don't want that, believe me. So there are two different major shielding gas people use for AM processes. It's nitrogen and argon. You can sometimes substitute nitrogen with argon, but usually never the other way around. So let's look at a few materials that you can use with nitrogen and what is important to use with argon. So steels, aluminum alloys, cobalt chrome, all these materials are typically used with nitrogen and works very well with that. However, if you use titanium or titanium alloys, you always have to use argon. And why is this the case? If you use nitrogen with titanium, you would get in your build chamber titanium nitrate. And uh, this is actually the hard stuff on your drill bits, the yellowish kind of stuff that you see when you purchase these tools. And the process would be really, really nasty if you use nitrogen. Basically, also, your titanium would burn, even though there's no oxygen, but it would burn in a yellowish fume, and believe me, you don't want that in your machine. So how do you measure your oxygen concentration? Typically, you use percentage or PPM, parts per million. So inside your build chamber, there are millions of atoms, and only a very few of those are oxygen. But measuring that precisely is really crucial for the quality of your part. Now what you can do is you can always lower your oxygen level. However, this comes at a cost because you will need more shielding gas in your machine. That's really easy. Let me draw your graph. So on one axis, you have the O2 concentration inside your build chamber. And on the other gas, you have how many liters of shielding gas you need per minute. And it's really easy. If you, let's say this is a thousand and this is 5,000 PPM, then the lower you go to absolute zero, the higher your oxygen concent or the higher your consumption of shielding gas will be because you continuously need to purge your chamber with new gas to stay at a really low level. Now we will show you in a later episode why low levels are really important. All right, so what are some typical parameters or oxygen levels you use for your different materials? Um, a very common material is stainless steel, and that's usually at around 3000 ppm. And also aluminum is processed around that ppm level. Of course, lower is always better, but like I showed you, lower also means you need more gas inside your machine and you have a higher cost of your gas consumption. Now, titanium and titanium alloys usually are, are processed at a much lower oxygen uh, content. So it's typically somewhere here around 500 ppm or lower, depending on the preheating of your build plate. So sometimes parts still oxidize like uh, this bottle opener here. And this is usually the case, not because your shielding gas was bad or because your oxygen level was too high, but simply because the part got too hot. So like we said in the previous episode, always consider heat management in your build job. So how does a typical process start for a machine look like? Typically first, your machine is purged with shielding gas until it's well, pretty much uh, no more oxygen in there. And then the gas gets recirculated and filtered to suck out all the welding fumes while the machine is printing. And for this, uh, to show you better how this works, we prepared a small experiment. So there are three basic types of purging. First is displacement purging, second is mixing, and third is pulling a vacuum. So for displacement purging, basically what you do is you really slowly let shielding gas into your build chamber and thereby 
push out all the air that's inside the build chamber. And hopefully this works now. This is cold milk and uh, really hot coffee. So the milk should stay on the bottom and slowly push up the coffee. Let's see if this works. Well, there you have it. This is not how it works. <laughs> okay, epic fail, I would say. <laughs> All right, so the first experiment was uh, sort of a fail. Um, so that's why I got a funnel and let's try this again. So in theory, um, this should also work. Um, let's put the funnel in there and slowly try to displace the coffee. With, yeah, this works much better. All right. Perfect. Now what you also see is there is still some coffee left in the milk. And uh, this is also the case in your 3D printer because it's really hard to get all the coffee out, or well, all the oxygen out. <laughs> and um, so what typically happens then is that you continuously have to purge or add more shielding gas to your system in order to keep your oxygen level at a low point. All right, so let's do the experiment again and now focus on the mixing purging. Basically, this is what happened the first time we did the previous experiment, but uh, let's do it again. All right, so when you pour in your gas rapidly, of course you displace or you mix out the oxygen also really fast. However, as you will see, this comes at the cost of having to use a lot of milk, or in this case, you know, shielding gas, to get the same level of whiteness or purity of your oxygen atmosphere inside your build chamber. So you in generally are faster this way, but you use a lot more gas. All right, so the third method of purging is pulling a vacuum first. So you try to get rid of all the oxygen and all the gas inside your build chamber and then pour back in your inert gas. So this is really easy actually to show with the coffee. So basically you pour out the coffee first, or in this case the oxygen, and then you add your inert gas back into the chamber. This is really efficient, obviously on the consumption of your shielding gas. However, your machine needs to, build, needs to be built for this. So for one, you need to have a vacuum pump in your machine, like on a DMP uh, 320, for example. And of course, the machine needs to be able to withstand the forces of a vacuum. So it needs to be really sturdy and really tough built. So this adds cost on the machine side, but then on the other side will help you on the cost of your inert gas. Also doing this usually also sucks out all the oxygen from your powder. So that way you can recycle your powder more often. So in the long run, this is a good technique. However, it usually adds a lot of initial cost to your machine. So what happens after the purging phase? After the purging phase, the pump kicks in and recirculates your inert gas inside your system. So basically, you know, you stir your milk. And it does that through a filter though, to suck out all the fumes and all the, you know, spatter from the process. Now over time, since all the machines are a bit leaky, you add oxygen from leaking spots and you will have a higher oxygen content in your chamber than before, right after you purged your chamber. So then the uh, oxygen control inside these machines start and add a little bit more inert gas just to make sure that the oxygen concentration stays below a certain threshold that you set previously, like 3000 ppm or 1000 ppm, depending on the process that you're running. All right, so what happens, for example, if you run out of shielding gas, you know, your tank is empty or whatever, then typically your oxygen level will rise over time inside your build chamber and um, eventually it will go over a critical level of about three to five percent 
And at that point, your safety system should kick in and shut off the laser to avoid having a fire in your machine. Now, the safety system is usually coupled with the oxygen sensor and there's a wide variety of oxygen sensors. Um, people have been asking me, what is the difference between these kinds of sensors? What is you know, the benefits of each type of sensor? What do you think? Should we do another episode about sensors? Let me know in the comments or write me. So what did we learn today? Today we learned about shielding gases, what type of gases are there, what materials are they good for, and also how does the purging of the typical metal 3D printer work. Next episode will be about beat the heat. So how do you get heat out of your part and how do you optimize your build job for that? Thanks for watching, stay tuned.